Hey guys, welcome back to another episode and part two of the My Better Supporting Method. And I say it's my method, but honestly, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who supports like this. I've learned a lot of the things I've learned from other folks that I've worked with in this business. And a lot of them have taught me that essentially things are either over-supported when they come pre-supported or under-supported when they come pre-supported. And over-supported means you're going to have to take out the clippers and you're going to just really just hate yourself when you're removing those supports. Under-supported means you have a very high chance of, depending on resin viscosity or depending on your printer, of having a failure based on the fact that the pre-supporting just isn't made for everyone. And we've covered that in another episode where we talked about why pre-supporting doesn't work across the board. But what we have found is that the particular type of resin that we're using, this supporting style works really well with it. Uh, the customers that we sell model kits to, they all really like the material and they say the damage is minimal, if any. Um, for the most part, what you get is the tiny little tips of the supports are left in the model because they're actually so small that they usually just break away. And what you wind up doing is just having to sand off those little nibs that get stuck on. Very few of them will. Most of the time, the supports are going to come off nice and clean, and the majority of the part we, we, is going to come out very clean, very ready to finish, sand, smooth out, and, uh, of course, you know, put together. Now, this particular model is brought to us from exclusive 3D print. This is Black Cat. This is a very cool piece. She's quite large. She's laying down on a bed, and she has a bunch of cats all over her in this particular pose. Um, and we uh, just... For the islands and stuff like this, I am going to use auto apply for some of these pieces because honestly, I'm not that concerned. I do island checks by hand for the most part, so I am not going to print anything that I know I'm visibly going to see any islands on. So we're going to use our light supports on this. Again, the tip is a 0.22 with a length of 3.22 and a diameter of the bar of 1.22. The mediums that we're using are a 0.44, a 3.44, and a 1.22. Now, sometimes I will use a tip length of 3.20 to a 3.25. It really just depends on orientation of the model, size of the piece, and the length I need to pull the tip out. Because, I mean, I might just make, need to make it a little bit longer to accommodate the bar needing to stretch away from the model or something. But each piece on this particular model, we're going to do each one, uh, support each piece, and then we're going to go over each one so you can kind of see the way I do each piece. Again, majority of these supports are light, and these are decently sized pieces. They're hollowed, but they're still decently sized pieces, so you're still going to get a decent amount of pull on these pieces. But I'm placing enough light supporting to create a suspension cage sort of around the model that's going to stop it from being pulled back in. And it's also the lightest type of supports that I can accommodate for these types of models. And it will do very, very little minimal damage and no detail loss whatsoever. The parts I produce look great. And this is pretty much the way I support everything that we do. And as always, I add the bracings last. And we go through each layer, of course. Now, I have sped these up because the actual process of going through each one of these parts took quite a lot of time. So these are sped up almost three times as fast as I normally work. So no, I'm not a human machine. This is not how quickly I actually work. But for those of you who've seen me in action, you know that I am actually pretty quick, even at normal speeds. Um, this, however, has been sped up because the whole video would have probably taken well over an hour. Um, We'll go through each part as well, and you'll see my style is pretty much the same with each part. Um, the only thing I'm going to do additionally, of course, is probably a little bit of internal supporting, uh, especially on this chest piece area that I'm working on, because that top is like a big flat plane that's going to kind of build over, and I don't want any of that to um, collapse or sink in. Now, this particular model... I have actually done the supports for before. 
um, but I'm redoing them in this particular aspect because we had actually supported it a little differently and I want to do it this way to see if we can actually get a better print out of it. So this is kind of a prototype, if you will. And we'll move right along with the chest piece. The uh, upper area of the, well, sorry, that was the lower torso. This is like the upper torso. Um, she's cut into a few parts, which is actually kind of convenient because the legs are usually the longest part of these particular uh, sculpts. And this particular artist does kind of like to do it this way where you have like uh, the segment of the top and the bottom. And then usually the legs are like the longest chunk. We have a rogue model that's very similar where her chest is uh, short, the head is kind of uh, large, but the um, other body parts are uh, s small in comparison to the legs. The legs are literally the longest part um, of the character. And it's actually kind of kooky because it, it, it'll take more time to print the legs than it will to print almost anything else on some of these figures. But the detail is great. Exclusive 3D Print has a great website. If you're interested in buying some of the STLs for yourself, um, or even if you're interested in commercially licensing them, they do have the option of buying the license right there. You don't even have to join the Patreon. You can just buy the flat license for each particular model if you want. Um, now, we are a patron of theirs, and we do actually have the merchant license through their Patreon. Um, and then we have actually bought a couple of their models as well. So we do really like their sculpts. They're, they're, they're great. They're high resolution. They look amazing. Uh, when printed in the good resins that we use, they just they look breathtaking. I mean, and and we're working on a Maleficent piece right now, uh, which I believe they call the Witch. Um, you know, because Disney. Uh, shit, my channel's probably going to get in trouble for saying that one. Anyway, <laughs> the, <laughs> the bottom line is is that we um, we we don't we're not even sure we're going to be able to show it off. On YouTube either because she's a, not only is she a little uh, more risque for YouTube audiences um, obviously we have the concern of <clears throat> copyrighted characters and that sort of thing making appearances on our YouTube channel uh, we don't want to get any DMCA strikes or anything so <laughs> try to avoid all that stuff folks and we'll keep working our way through the layer by layer process where again really your focus here is just going to be looking for areas that are going to get pressure on their initial build and you're going to want to support them a bit more there. If you find that they're already clustered or they already have a lot of supports around them, consider maybe moving some of those around and restructuring it so that we, the initial points of contact have more supports on them rather than the upper points of contact. You want to make sure where your print starts is the most um, intense supporting because that's really going to do the most pulling and flopping and all that because the resin is softer. It doesn't form as well initially like that when you get your first couple layers, and that's why usually you get warping. Um, so that's something to consider, and you always have to be conscious of that. Now, if we're looking at the legs here, the way that they did those island supports is terrible, so I'm actually going to redo those. It's a little, little too much for me right there in that one spot. I'm like, how many supports do we need? Um, Lychee gets a little carried away sometimes when you do tell it to do something, so you kind of got to... You know, you got to make sure that you're uh, you're being a little uh, cleanup is is required on some of that. When you when you do use that function, I will say that if you go back and we use the island function that I use to apply islands or apply supports to all islands, you you must you absolutely must and promise me that you will you must go back and check your islands to make sure that they are appropriate. Uh, again, here we're working with mediums and lights. Not very many mediums mostly lights. I am going to use the support painter on this because there's so much surface area to cover and it's nice and curvy because <laughs> it's her butt and it lets me kind of paint around the edges like that and I can I can even get some uniformity there with the painter. It's actually pretty convenient and a very nice um, way for me to cut my workflow time uh, by being able to do that. And obviously you know sped up it looks even faster but it's, it's a really convenient way to do it. I do love the support painter. It does have its glitchy moments where it doesn't quite work the way I want it to. But for the most part, man, it is a time saver. Especially when I'm doing stuff like this where I'm literally just painting on a bunch of supports. I might go in and kind of modify some. But in, for the most part, this works really great when you're working on a bunch of parts at the same time. Um, 
And again, you can make modifications to it. They don't have to stick where they stick. Uh, this is it's really all about you know painting them on. And uh, of course, you can adjust the way the painter works too. You can adjust the uh, sensitivity to angle where you have like your interval and then you have your max angle so you have your interval preset and then your max angle can actually induce like a medium or a heavy uh, depending on the maximum angle uh, and that's really convenient too because you can actually have the support painter can actually kind of be intelligent for you um, where it's going to be able to find those spots and it's not always good because if you're trying to focus and use all one particular type of support tip you might actually have to go back and check a couple of supports if you wind up putting too heavy a support in a couple of areas. You, want, you don't want to make sure you, you don't tree trunk uh, any of your supports together. And you want to make sure you don't block any drain holes. That's another thing that I find um, will sometimes happen when you use either auto supporting or the uh, apply all supports to islands feature. Will you'll Sometimes you'll get uh, the holes will get blocked because essentially lead you will just put a support through a hole. It's like, oh, this space here, I'll just shove, shove a support through that. And uh, since the holes I make are, are larger, in most cases, they have room to fit because the bars are pretty thin. So you you know you'll find that like they'll clog up the hole, and then eventually, what happens is a little bit of resin gets in there, and they might get sealed, and then you you don't have a drain hole anymore. So that is always something to be conscious of. Make sure you're not oversaturating your drain hole area, so that way you don't uh, you don't wind up with a clog in your drain hole. Because when you're doing hollowing stuff, super important that you maintain that, otherwise you're going to wind up with pockets. Uh, in your model that have resin and you're going to wind up probably with a failure uh, if it has to pull too much and it winds up pulling and pulling and pulling and when you're getting that suction cupping like pop 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 um, that's not going to be good repeatedly so definitely keep that in mind definitely something to check islands are always important uh, but the, the whole suction cupping drain hole thing uh, if you're working with hollow bodies and hollow models and you don't have adequate drain holes or your suction cupping is, is crap like where you have a lot of suction cup areas, you're going to have a bad time with that. Like a real bad time with that. Now again, as you move up and down the model, you really just want to go slice by slice, and you want to kind of go as slowly as possible, applying the, the supports that you know are going to be needed in those initial contact places as the model builds itself up. Now different parts of Black Hat obviously have different levels of intricacy and detail, and since the legs have got a little bit of a weird position to them and since she's going to be laying down I kind of wanted to angle them down but I didn't want to angle them down too much because that's going to create too much of a flat plane in some areas on her leg but then even in this position she still wound up with a flat plane almost where her one of her legs is kind of um, parallel to the build plate almost now thank God the leg has a bit of a curve in it because of the calf muscle uh, and anatomically it looks pretty pretty structurally good there so we're able to figure that out. Now moving on to the head, uh, you're going to see that this is a weird shaped piece in general, but the head itself should actually have a decent amount of places where you're going to stick on these supports. The head also has part of the hand on it, so that's a bit awkward as that's facing down, but that was the honestly the best orientation for this entire part. The unfortunate part is, is I'm going to have to be extremely cautious when chipping this off the plate itself initially because that hand is sitting real close to the bottom and I think uh, those fingers are going to be pretty small regardless of the size of this model. Now the hand itself is curled up so the fingers aren't exactly pointing straight down but still um, definitely need to be careful when removing supports. Definitely need to be conscious of, of that hand for sure. Now again, here we're working mostly with whites. Um, we do place a couple mediums where they need to be for anchoring, of course, and to keep the model from slipping back into the fat. Now, as always, just focus on the yellow zones. That's going to be your primary target. Um, we don't use the support painter as much on the objects like the head because it's got too many curves and divots, um, and it doesn't really take well to support painting. You can do it. It, it will work. You're just going to wind up with kind of mixed results. Um, where it just doesn't catch supports for you like you want it to. And that, um, you know, it's pretty much it for the head. Uh, there's, you know, obviously we're going to go slice by slice on this one after we add the bracings. And we'll take a look at the rest of that. And that'll pretty much be the whole plate. 
Now, to wrap up in conclusion here for this whole method, and the reason I've called this the better supporting method is because most dudes, when they do supporting, they're using alternate weights on each tip. They're using a different bar, different tip, different diameter, and they're swapping between those tips depending on where they're placing the support tips and such like that. In my particular supporting method, the reason I'm calling this better is because it's easier. to re You really don't have to focus on much besides maybe one or two support um, sizes. You're going to focus on a medium and a light, and you're going to pick one of those. You know, you're going to pick two of those sizes, and you're going to have those sizes, and you're going to have those as your presets, and you're just going to swap between those two. Now, if you do it like I do, and you're working with hollow bodies, you're going to be able to majority do a lot of lights, and your light supports are going to be super easy to remove. They're not going to kill your details, and they're going to be really, really, really easy to do your finishing work from. So. In that sense, it's a really good way to support a lot of pieces that you're working on at the same time. And honestly, the proof is in the pudding. We have a lot of people telling us the quality of our prints are amazing, and this is how we do each and every single one. I do not use a single heavy support on any of my pieces except for terrain parts. And honestly, terrain parts are meant for FDM, in my opinion. Those things are usually too big. Uh, I don't even like printing them on resin printers too much. And, um, yeah, I mean... The, that you're really looking for the most efficient way to do this with the best cleanup and the best way to in kind of enhance the uh, the method that you're printing. And if you use a good support method to print your model, you're not only going to get better results, you're going to get better detail, and you're going to have a model that's easier to finish and easier to work on. And I think that's important because at the end of the day, we you know you don't really want to spend hours and hours and hours doing your sanding work on something before you even get to paint it. And I think that's important to note. And that's pretty much the whole plate. We're going to go ahead and run the export on that and um, get this one printing. And uh, I'll let you guys know how that came out in the comments there in a couple of days when I do get a chance, besides my customer prints, to get this done for you. Now, again, we did have a video discussing the different anti-aliasing settings. And on this one, I was kind of deliberating between whether I wanted to go with sharpen details or smooth. Um, because she's got some smoother surfaces like her butt, the different areas in her hair. But I also want to kind of sharpen the lines on this. So I'm going to go with sharpened details at the end of the day anyway. And kind of go with my normal default um, settings that I usually use for that. Now if you're curious about the anti-aliasing settings and what they mean and different styles. Um, I know on some printers like 8K they can go all the way up to 16 uh, and such like that. Uh, for the 4K printers, I think you're going to see a limit of 8. So it really depends on what kind of printer you're using, but the AA settings can actually mean the difference between a really good looking print and kind of a, I want to say muddy detailed print. Like if you offset the gray too much, it's going to look bad, but if you don't use it at all, you might wind up not, you know, losing some of those layer lines and then all of a sudden you just, it just looks too chunky. So, again, it's, it's something you kind of have to play with a little bit and see how the print looks different. And you could try the different settings, and to the naked eye, it may not look different to you at all. So, that's, again, it's something you got to kind of play around with. Anyway, that's all we have time for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Again, please hit that subscribe, like, comment, and don't forget to ring the bell if you want notifications about episodes that we do. We have a lot planned for this year. Uh, again, I mentioned this in a previous episode, but we were talking about going into a Patreon where we kind of start our own 3D printing school, so to speak, and we're going to teach you guys how to do this pretty much from beginning all the way to the advanced stuff. Anyway, let us know what you think. Thanks guys for watching. See you all soon.